a woman celebrating the fact that she's a woman uh, caused a furor last week. Is the term woman now an endangered species? So the recent Brit Awards music ceremony was held in London uh, last week, and uh, in order to appease the gender activists, the ceremony agreed this year to do away with male and female award categories, and instead have one, just a sex neutral one. For example, there's no best male artist or best female artist. Instead, there would now be only an award for artist of the year. And, and in fact, New Zealand has gone down the same woke approach as well. Why do they make this change? Well, it's to make sure that people who do not identify as either male or female are not excluded from winning awards. As the Brit Awards website explains, the Brits confirm that for the 2022 show, they will move away from the female and male categories and will launch new awards for Artist of the Year and International Artist of the Year, celebrating artists solely for their music and work rather than how they choose to identify or as others may see them. As part of the Brits' commitment to involving the show to be as inclusive and as relevant as possible. Woke as, eh? But then, Adele, a woman, won. And Artist of the Year goes to... Adele! Well, a popular winner, and ironically, Adele is a known supporter of much of the LGBT agenda. In fact, she even said that one of her songs, Set Fire to the Rain, was actually written to be a gay anthem. Well, uh, she may not be quite so popular now because listen to the controversial thing that she said. Artists here, England, the UK, we have so many incredible new young artists coming up and never lose sight of why you are who you are. The reason people are into you is because of something you have in you. Don't ever let go of that ever. Yeah, I just, and also I also, you know, I, I, I understand why the name of this award has changed, but I really love being a woman and being a female artist. I do. <laughs> I you do. Go, girl. And I'm, re I'm really proud of us. I really, really am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, she looked very popular, didn't she? She was celebrating, celebrating the awards, celebrating being a woman. But then, of course, what happens is that uh, somebody on Twitter gets very upset and they post a tweet. There, there's someone who's completely unknown, but the media hang around Twitter. Uh, and if somebody kicks up a stink, complains, gets triggered, is offended, then suddenly that is big news. And Adele is, in, is accused of uh, transphobia. Uh, interestingly enough, I saw that on Billboard they still have the female top artist of the year. In fact, just last week, here in New Zealand, we had the supreme winner at the Women of Influence Awards. Gee, we still have a ministry for women. Is that still allowed? Although you can't actually talk about the definition of woman. This was a sign put up by Speak Up for Women. Uh, some, some people got triggered by the sign, and actually the sign got pulled down by the company. Just how silly can this all get? Well, I saw a story uh, just at the weekend in The Australian. Uh, and it was Karen Lizagnoli. She was dumped just days into her new job as a chief executive of Girl Guides in Western Australia. Why? Because she sought legal advice on the changing of the membership rules to biological females. Now, the Girl Guides in Western Australia, they define a girl as any person under the age of 18 years who lives their life as female. Now, this wording alarmed the chief executive, and so she messaged the woman's right lawyer, Catherine Deves, the head of Save Women's Sport Australia, to seek legal advice. And an LGBT website noticed the tweet. They kicked up a stink. The next day, this chief executive was given her marching orders. But the national headquarters has drawn up guidelines of inclusion and gender diversity, which actually state that an individual is considered to be the final authority on their own gender identity. And they state that the girl will participate in the same activities as all other youth members of your unit. This includes sleeping in the same area as other youth members, the guidelines say, and denying transgender people access to bathrooms is a form of discrimination. Here's a, here's a classic. 
If a girl transitions to become a boy, they must quit girl guides. So biological girls cannot be part of girl guides. And here's the best bit. As an all-female organization, girl guides are no longer the right place for members who have transitioned to male. <laughs> uh, yeah, you might want to think about um, putting your girls in girl guides. But the interesting thing is that there's some new research that has just come out that is asking, are our efforts to introduce inclusive language backfiring? Could it be are having the opposite effect in some cases, potentially dehumanizing women. This paper was written by 10 authors renowned for their work in the field of women's health. And it was published on the online science platform Frontiers in Global Women's Health this week or last week. And it claims that this could indeed be the case. The authors are based in Australia, Asia, Europe, the United Kingdom, United States. And they've suggested that highly respected medical journals such as The Lancet by introducing terms that replace words such as woman may have unintended consequences. These consequences, the authors argue, include decreasing overall inclusivity, dehumanizing, including people who should be excluded, obviously, like the Girl Guides, and being imprecise, inaccurate, or misleading. And, and one example they use is the term breastfeeding, which has been replaced by the Woke Brigade uh, with de-sexed terms such as chest feeding. Now obviously they say referring to chests rather than breasts is medically inaccurate. The chest in medical terminology refers to the rib cage and everything within it and does not include mammary tissue. Chest pain may signify a serious heart or lung condition whereas breast pain may signify a breast condition such as mastitis. And the article also singles out the word mother in particular. It says, there is a word for mother in every language. It is commonly the first word said by children and is perhaps the oldest word ever spoken. Replacement words for mother identified by the authors include birthers, birthing parents, caregivers, gestational parents, postnatal people, and postpartum individuals. These languages change, says the author, have the potential through linguistic processes. Actually, I call it linguistic linguistic gymnastics, but they call it linguistic processes, it has the potential to undermine the recognition of what mothers mean to all infants. And that is exactly right, isn't it? We're, we're fooling ourselves when we change terms that are so basic, uh, and it's time we went back to the basics, to say man and woman, to celebrate biology, to celebrate fact. <laughs>